So, I've had a lot of free time in my hands. And with that time, I played every single game on Game Pass. Whether it was really good or really bad, or whether it was just a really fucking weird game that I'm not sure if I should have played. But all that aside, here's a list of the good games of Game Pass. Bad North. A cute real-time strategy game. I've dumped a good amount of hours into this game, and honestly, it's just really easy to jump into. It's really basic, you get to level up all your characters, and in all honesty, you get to fight Vikings. So it's pretty fucking clutch. Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Two pretty amazing games. In all honesty, if you haven't played them, you probably should. Just, uh, don't fucking play this one. It just feels like a troll. It feels like Conker's Bad Fur Day and Banjo. Just, I don't like it. But if you're gonna get it, get this. Not this. Remember, this? Definitely fucking not this. Batman Arkham Knight. Pretty fantastic game. Honestly, you can't really go wrong if you're just playing Batman. It's for sure on the level of Dark Knight. It's not a wuss game. If you really just want to fuck shit up and follow into Batman's dark footsteps for justice, then I highly recommend this game. Where is the commissioner? Do it. Oh, you're back. And I hate you again. Battle Chasers. Personally, I'm a huge RPG fan, so I love the art style and I love the gameplay. It's very traditional, nothing too crazy, but a little bit of an upbeat tone to something old. And just a heads up, a lot of people don't like turn-based nowadays, but this is turn-based. There are a lot of good RPGs on Game Pass, but this is definitely an RPG for beginners. So if you haven't tried one before, this is the one to start off with. Leading Edge. Body are awesome. These guys are augmented. If you want to play Overwatch or Valorant and don't have either, just hunker down and play this fucking game. It's pretty weird, but it's pretty fun. There's definitely a bit of a learning curve, but once you really find a character that you like, just try to pick them as much as you can and get them down. Then you can scrape people like I'm getting scraped. Yay. Bridge Constructor, a portal game. Portal's a classic. This is not Portal, so to speak, but it is a very cute strategy game that's really easy to just jump right into. You know, plus if I get bored, I just watch them die. It's fun. Dead by Daylight. A good horror game that loves to make tropes to the horror genre, whether it's Life or Dead, Stranger Things, or Ash and the Evil Dead. The main point of this game is you play one of four survivors that also plays somebody else PvP that is a killer. And if you can't set off four generators and get the fuck out, you lose. The Fable series. If you've never played these games, please start from the beginning. Fable started an incredible story that was completely unforgettable for gamers. The game morphed and changed with every decision you made, whether it was good or bad. That was the fun of the game, the expansive decisions. They give you the fun, happy-go-lucky ending if you really want it, but they also give you the really fucked up ending if you really want it too. Fallout New Vegas. There's so much to say about this game. Fallout 3 had an incredibly fun and interactive world. New Vegas, on the other hand, had much more engaging missions, and some of the mechanics were just, well, done a little bit better. That all in said, New Vegas is more of the uh, rough and rowdy cowboy version. If you're gonna play this, you might as well put on survival mode and really try to risk it. It's a little bit more challenging than the other Fallout games, but it's definitely more satisfying. Final Fantasy IX. This game for sure got overran by other Final Fantasies at the time. Its fun and whimsical feel really did get overlooked. As a kid, it gave me some of my most memorable characters. Like, I will never forget Vivi. And again, this is a classical RPG style, but one thing that they have added is all these nifty little gadgets down here. So whether you're having trouble with a fight, or you've played the game before and you just want to hash through some of the cutscenes, it's kind of worth it. Even if you don't want to play this game for any other reason, play it for the character development. And Vivi. He my boy just like Cheeto. Final Fantasy XV. This is an incredibly beautiful game. This is another one I would recommend for people that are new to the genre. 
I recommend not downloading anything unless you're having trouble with the game or get to New Game Plus. It can be very easily derailed if you download too much DLC. Also, this might look fun, but uh, like truly, I, I really wouldn't even make my worst enemy play this shit. Don't do it. Either or, I would consider this a modern RPG, and definitely recommend and play if you get the time. GET THAT FISH! Gears of War 5. To all the destruction and mayhem Gears has caused over the years, Gears 5 is a nice follow-up. Like, Jack is finally useful. In multiple different ways! Honestly, who fucking knew? But that being said, Gears is always glitchy as fuck. Some of them are not that fun, but uh, some of them just add to the fucking game. It's not a Gears game without a few glitches here and there. Even if it is a final boss and you keep getting fucked by it, it's still, still kind of funny. Alright, right. oh! Alright, fucking run. Oh yeah, fucking run. But even with all the glitches, it's so fucking satisfying to do this. And this! And with the addition of Operations 3, they've added a few game types, maps, tours of duty, everything that's on the screen. Golf with friends. Now here's a quirky little golf game that you can play a multitude of courses, as well as game types. While it does remind me of Sonic Ball, it's a fun way to play mini golf with your friends at home. Hollow Knight. Usually referred to as the Dark Souls of platformers, and it's the first game that's really made me rage quit in quite some time. In its roots, it's a Mega Man game. Get the enemy's moves down, and you're good. And the areas are no Mario Maker, but it's about traversing them constantly. And again, just like Dark Souls, it's incredibly satisfying to beat a boss. Even when you have to run around, get new charms, and come back and fight him again, it's worth it. <laughs> you ate all your children! Human Fall Flat. An overly adorable puzzle game that you can play with your friends. Controls are really derpy, but it kind of adds to the fun of the game. Everything is very ragdoll. It's also fun to see your friends fail when you succeed. Or launch your own ass out of a catapult. Bah. I'm in the mainframe. Ha <laughs> ha! I forgot what I had to do. Life is Strange 2. The second one is on Game Pass. I highly recommend playing the first one if you can. But they have nothing to do with each other aside from Easter eggs and being in the same world. These games are based off individuals with supernatural powers. The plots really rip the characters from their real lives, and then the beautiful storyline steps in. If you just want a great story and a crazy experience, go for it. Lonely Mountain Downhill. There's really not that much to say about this game. It's just fun. The controls are a little bit weird. Left does mean directly left, and right does mean directly right. But for me, it kind of provided a little bit of a challenge. I can't just not accept a challenge. Even if it means dying over and over and over and over. Metro, Last Light Redux. I chose this Metro because it's a little bit more linear than the other ones. It really just throws you into the game, aside from just panning you out with story for a while. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It just plays a little bit more like Doom. You just want more energy and action. If you really just want to fuck shit up and take names, this will satisfy your fix. Middle Earth Shadow of War. A Lord of the Rings game that plays a lot like Far Cry or Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can take the traditional stealth approach, or you can jump right into battles just like the old Assassin's Creed style. Block attack, block attack, switch enemies. Repetitive, but pretty fun. Moonlighter. This plays like your traditional Link game. Fuck shit up in a dungeon, keep going deeper, kill the boss. The catch is, you're a merchant, and the only reason you're going into the dungeons is to figure out what happened to your vanished father. And to sell items in your shop, to get upgrades, so you can get farther into a dungeon for more plot. Near Automata. This game has a pretty wide spectrum when it comes to gameplay. It starts you off initially as like a side shooter, and then jumps you right into a fighter. This is how the majority of the game is played though. 
kind of a hack and slash RPG with the over the shoulder shooter. It's pretty unique. And it's a beautiful RPG. I love the game, but I love the bosses so much more. It was that, the storyline, and the 26 alternative endings. Yeah, I got drawn in. It's funny though, because once you get to a certain point, the game lets you buy achievements and trophies. Ori 1 and 2. Both of these games are packed full of emotion. They toss your feelings around kind of like a Disney movie. Ori on the surface is a very cute and whimsical game, but can also be just as unrelenting as Hollow Knight. And we all know how fucking bad that shit is. Just, this took me like three hours. Just want to let you know that. Cool. Outer Worlds. So I actually already did a review on this game. It's pretty comical to a certain point, and then it kind of cuts off. It gives a much more sci-fi feel to a Fallout kind of game, but compared to the other Fallout games, it's incredibly short. And honestly, I'm a grinder. I'm the type of person that is already going to be wrecking shit now because I've already over-leveled everything because I did all the fucking side missions before this story. Yeah, my fault. I don't even need that item. Oxenfree. An enthralling, creepy little sci-fi game. Uh, what did you flip? With a lot of replayability. I'm actually on my fourth playthrough, and I'm not gonna say much here, but if you like the rest of this footage, you should really play this game. That's, it's incredibly interesting. That's, God, I haven't heard this in forever. This is something my mom used to- ah. I am so tired of this funhouse bullcrap. Alex? Are you? What, what is this? Red Dead Redemption 2. Finishing with over 100 gameplay hours and over 100 gigabytes of space, this rootin' tootin' cowboy fuckery is fucking glitchy. But same as Gears, it kinda goes with the game. And if you have the space, pick it up. Remnant. Okay, I have a lot to say about this game. I picked this up on my first look through on Game Pass and saw how crazy this shit was. I'm surprised I never caught wind of this game. The community is super lively and there's so much replayability, it's kinda crazy. Between defeating every single little side boss for every weapon set and every armor, me and a friend of mine easily spent over 60 hours in this game. And we got everything we fucking could. But exactly like I said, I played this with a friend. Cause even if you play solo and you rank up your gear, enemies rank with you. So this could mean you could rank up a little bit of armor, but not your weapons and get scraped. But again, online is pretty lively. And there's some people that have helped me. And there are some people that have fucked me up really bad. So like I said, if you have a friend that likes dungeon crawlers and has game pass, you should ask him to play. Rise and shine. Snake? Rambo? Pac-Man? Portal? Okay, if you haven't noticed, this is definitely a platform game for gamers. It is riddled with game references. The game is really captivating just because how hard it is. Between these platformer boss fights, and intricate puzzles that you have to do through using different gun mods. I'll be playing this game in the future. Yeah. See, Black Mesa reference. Rocket League. There is a bit of a learning curve here. I mean, you are playing sports with a fucking car. That aside, one of my favorite features of Rocket League is as long as you have online, you can get a friend to play online with you. Though this game does ride the edge of, uh, skill and fucking luck super hard. Like, what just happened? But right. on to the next game. <laughs> Slay the Spire. This card-based dungeon crawler is much more than meets the eye. You do grab a classic hero, but you tend to just throw yourself at the tower numerous times until you level up enough to actually beat it. And depending on the encounters and the cards you get, every gameplay seems drastically different. And the more you play, the easier it'll be to make a deck to take down the tower. State of Decay 2. I would say this is one of the better zombie survival games on Game Pass. There are a few others, but this is the one that really pays attention to detail. You create a team based on their appropriate stats, 
and you set out into the world. There are a multitude of people that you can save and recruit into your team, but try not to let anybody die. You can switch out between any character in your team though. For example, going out with somebody that can run really fast, or has some sort of melee perk. And that's just for starters. Streets of Rage 4. This game stays very true to the beat-em-ups genre. Compared to the other beat-em-ups on Game Pass, it's much more fluid. Each hero has their own playstyle as well as special power. And it looks easy, but it's much easier with two players. Totally accurate battle simulator. Okay, get a homie. Get some beers. Sit down and play this fucking game. <laughs> Cause that, that's why. Honestly, this game is just hours upon hours of just stupid fun. You just build the match and watch the war. Ugh, oh, god. That's so many dead things. Untitled Goose Game. You're a goose with a to-do list. And the to-do list is to fuck with everybody. Hmm. I place it just... <laughs> yes! So if you leave that kid in there, and then you bring the keys over here, and then you just go, nope, hold on. You go and get this thing. Oh, there we go. Uh, fuck you guys, I'm a goose! I'm sure my what remains of Edith Finch? In this game, you ride the coattails of some Pretty fantastical stories. Now that These stories are about a family left, that, I thought it was time well, I heard the stories. their members are diminishing, but in incredibly strange but and obscure ways. All you have to do is traverse a labyrinth of a house to figure them all out. Witcher 3. This is off the bat a very expansive and quite demanding game. As wide and open as Red Dead 2, and enough side missions to make Skyrim cry. So you start off the game basically as a Jedi? Yeah, you're a fucking, you're, I'll just call you a Jedi. I haven't done anything to you, so just calm down. If you like the feel for open world RPGs cool and taking out magical mythical creatures, then I would say add this to your game list. Wizard of Legend. This is another RPG, you kind of have to throw yourself at the dungeon for a while until you get items. But in my opinion, I fucking love those kind of games. It does completely randomize the dungeon every time though. That and running through new spells and items and outfits. One of the downfalls is it's only local co-op. I'm a huge fan of that, but I can understand how people don't like it. They've also added updates with new characters and new maps. So adds a little bit more of a challenge. I really enjoy it. Yakuza Zero. You ever want to be part of the Yakuza? Well, this is your chance. Whether you're running around serving out justice to thugs, or doing terrible karaoke, or beating the shit out of more thugs, or bowling? There's a lot to this game. It also can be quite linear at times. You kind of find yourself on a set storyline of just mini games and actual plot. The main entertainment comes from unlocking skills, so you can do more badass techniques and finishers. This game is packed full of stuff, even if you don't want to play the storyline, you can just bowl with your friends from the main screen. Yakuza Kiwami. If you played the first one, it's much more of that mishmash of gameplay, just with a different story and a lot better graphics. It's much more a high intensive 2.0 than the first one. Much less laid back and pretty, and much more dark and crazy. I recommend that you use the games because of their unique gameplay and crazy story. Yoku's Island. I know, I know what this looks like. I know this looks terrible. It looks terrible. But have you played a platformer that plays like a pinball game? Cause it's fucking fun. And I know I'm just a sucker for unique platformers, but after Ori and Hollow Knight, I'm just gonna play this. <laughs> 